Uh, good morning. Hello and uh, welcome to the live webinar, live session, fifth live session for Life Skill MOOC. Uh, 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 based on the fifth week of the module of the Life Skill MOOC, under which we have already uh, gone through a few topics, which is uh, meaning and importance of leadership, process and functions of leadership, and a leadership styles. So today, uh, the topic on which uh, we will be focusing is leadership during crisis. As we are all aware that we are actually right now in a crisis situation due to the pandemic. So uh, this session, I think, will be very relatable to all of us in one way or the other. So for taking up uh, today's session, we have with us Dr. G. Padmaja. She is uh, head center for health psychology, School of Medical Sciences. She's also deputy dean, students welfare at University of Hyderabad in India. I welcome you ma'am uh, for today's session. I would also like to welcome Dr. Manas Ranjan Panigrahi, senior program officer, Commonwealth Educational Media Center for Asia, who is a big uh, support as well as uh, backbone of this uh, whole life skill MOOC. Uh, so now I am uh, handing over uh, this uh, session to Padmaja ma'am for her uh, inputs and her experienced uh, ideas to share with us and enlighten us on this topic, leadership during crisis a little more. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am. Hand over to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Monica. And uh, yeah, you have been coordinating the uh, whole uh, um, course very well. And thank you so much, Dr. Manasji. Yes, as rightly pointed out by Dr. Monica, Dr. Manas has been the background backbone and he has created the background also for this course. And he has been running it very successfully for the, for the past two, three years. And uh, um, um, we are seeing that the feedback is excellent and uh, the way he is coordinating the whole thing is really very good. Thanks to you, Dr. Manas, for giving us the opportunity. Uh, the whole uh, I'm one of the members of the team um, under the leadership of Professor Ram Brahmam, sir. So um, um, I, I thank you for this opportunity given to me. And um, I deem it very important to talk about leadership during crisis, especially. We have been looking at leadership from various perspectives for the past few days in this whole week across the modules. And then we have been looking at, like Dr. Monica had mentioned, what is what is leadership and why engineers in particular require leadership. And even otherwise, even if you are not an engineer, how it, it, within the role which is prescribed to you, how you can emerge as a leader, what is the background of leadership and what are the various skills which are required for, inter, uh, for a leadership and uh, the characteristics uh, that a leader possesses as well as the different styles of leadership. Now, leadership, when everything is all right, when all things are set and the organization has prescribed a particular role to us, has given certain uh, modalities, and there is a culture, there's a climate which is uh, available, and then we have to follow certain set rule patterns and the routine process. Managing things during that time is something which is pretty common. Like I said in the beginning of uh, right through these modules, managing things are one way of looking at things but leadership is something more than that not just the mere management but a little more than that or extensively more than that so when there is a crisis a leader is a person who can handle crisis when there is a crisis and then a leader emerges um, pretty well when when he can handle when he or she can handle the crisis. So right now, as Dr. Monica has very rightly pointed out, um, we are in the whole world, not just us. We are in a crisis where there are, there are different patterns which have emerged. There is a new normal which has emerged. People are still getting, in spite of it being one year, more than one year now, we are still getting used to the variety of patterns which we have to uh, adapt ourselves to. And adaptation is a pattern of life now. 
we are adapting every day we are managing things every day at the rate of every day every day uh, um, um, there, there, there lingers a lot of uncertainty with the dawn of every day you don't know where uh, there, there are a lot of question marks today are we are we going to go to the office or not today are we going to take up our roles and responsibilities or not today are we going to do what we are supposed to do or not every day is a, is an uncertainty every day brings with it an insecurity however in spite of the adversity that we have faced the whole world has proved also that we are resilient that we do have the capacities to handle things that we do have the capacities to withstand things and then emerge successful more or less successful yes initially when we didn't have enough um, exposure to the facts about the virus and all we we were we were perturbed we were we were we were, we were under a lot of psychological crisis but now we have emerged and we have evolved so this is the time where we and and with the second wave that that is going on especially right now and our country being um, um, affected um, pretty heavily being affected pretty heavily several states being affected pretty heavily this is the time where once again we have to think about how and what to do during crisis both as a common person more so in the context of what we are learning right now about leadership probably about leadership during crisis now coming to the organizational context leadership is an art of motivating a group of people in order to achieve a common goal it plays an important role during crisis events for example by maintaining a positive organizational culture and crisis what is crisis today we have, I have, we, we we were saying that we are going through a crisis and what is crisis it's a rare significant and public situation which creates highly undesirable consequences for the enterprise and its stakeholders and requires from the business leaders immediate corrective action crisis involve many negative events and elicit negative emotions and corresponding behaviors as well we have been seeing this through this pandemic crisis as well when what are the elements which are involved in this crisis one since we are talking about an organizational background whatever our organization or institution that we belong to a threat to the organization today the very survival today the very functioning today the basic core functioning of the organizations has become a question mark and we are evolving new methods and strategies to deal with several things so the first and foremost a threat to the organization there is an element of surprise yes it was it was a surprise which was never never welcome it was an unwelcome surprise the pandemic effect has been an unwelcome surprise and we hardly had any time and a short decision time is what marks the crisis a short decision time is something which is which, which is very significant in um, a crisis situation so definitely a short decision time and crisis is a process of transformation where the old system can no longer be maintained we are all aware of it when it said that and it is very relevant to the crisis that we are all going through at this point in time and fourth defining quality is the need for change change is the only thing which is permanent anything everything has to change and welcoming change adaptation to change is something which is very much necessary so the three elements along with that the fourth defining quality the need for change are what make up a crisis and the management of crisis there may be routine crisis we may all have our routine crisis there may be anticipated events known risks if you if you if you step out of your home a little late maybe by one minute or so then you may, you may miss your bus your your uh, your train or your uh, means of transport um, um yeah, there may be a, a problem somewhere and they, somebody may fall ill anticipated organizations can then plan and develop procedures for the same like for example when you are working in an organization there may be certain plans if you are in a manufacturing unit there may be certain safety plans when uh, when it is a food company then we will have some recall plans i will tell you towards the end of today's session one such example then security plans for companies all these are in anticipation of certain risks and certain crises and certain challenges we plan certain things so these are routine crises now the difference is novel crises 
risks which exhibit unusual frequency and impact. Today's crisis that we are going through, the pandemic crisis is, is a looming uh, example, is a huge example for the crisis that may um, evolve. Organizations typically don't have plans for such events. Maybe a confluence of two or three events that strike at the same time, like for example, the safety of the company, the very existence of the company may, be, may be become a question mark, or they may be simply be too big or unusual to be imagined. Again, the current crisis is too big, unusual. It was beyond our imagination. Like I, I said, it's an unwelcome surprise beyond anybody's imagination, unanticipated and causing such a lot of insecurity and uh, loss of safety. Now, about eight types of crisis have been discussed by Lerbinger, natural disaster, technological crisis, confrontation, malevolence, organizational misdeeds, workplace violence, rumors, or terrorist attacks or man-made disasters. And coming to the phases of crisis, once a crisis has been set in, we cannot stop crisis. It, it, I mean, one, there, there are certain crises which cannot be avoidable, which are unanticipated, which may uh, loom large and which may just dawn in such a way that they are uh, beyond any prevention. Probably it is only after that that we think about prevention. Like, for example, we are taking the vaccinations now so that any further harm uh, might be prevented or in anticipation of certain uh, um, problems, we are, we are all trying to take vaccination to try to protect ourselves to at least the bare minimum extent that we can. Now, phases of crisis, once the crisis dawns, that's when we talk about the phases of crisis. Five phases of crisis that require specific crisis leadership competencies. This is where the leadership matters. Each phase contains an obstacle that a leader must overcome to improve the structure and operations of an organization. Like, for example, first and foremost is signal detection. The, when, when, when there is a signal, understanding that there is a possibility of a crisis. Second, preparation and intervention, prevention. Preparation and prevention. This is what we are doing when, when the second uh, uh, phase of crisis is evolving. That is when the second wave of the crisis that we are facing, the pandemic is, um, uh, is being evolving. That's when we started preventive measures, isn't it? Then containment and damage control. Once again, we have seen in organizations and across the world and in our country, in our states, at our local level, at a uh, global level, at, at a national level and at a global level, we have been seeing this being done. Business recovery. How are we going to uh, set, come, come back to where we started? And of course, learning a lot of lessons. Learning is something which is done during this uh, uh, period of crisis. Instead of being uh, um, bowing down before it and saying that uh, we, there is nothing that we could do or we can do, learning, learning lessons and implementing what is necessary based upon that lessons. That is what is one of the leadership qualities. So what to do when there is a crisis, when there is something which is unanticipated, something which is beyond your control, something which may not have happened but has happened then what do you do when the crisis erupts when the crisis is ongoing what do you do that is where the leadership comes into the picture that's where effective leadership comes into the picture so this is where the leaders irrespective of your style of leadership irrespective of any other external help or internal help or whatever you know combining everything that um, is available a leader would lead decisively with a decision, with a firm decision, and will try to continuously analyze the situation. It is not just at a particular phase during crisis, but continuously the analysis of the situation has to happen and to actively communicate and be ready for the unexpected. When there is already some unexpected, why not some more unexpected? So anticipating the unanticipated, expecting the unexpected. So yes, sometimes it may appear as though you are catastrophizing, 
thinks and your thinking itself is catastrophical but anticipation of more catastrophes will help you build up certain preventive measures so to be ready for the unexpected expected and unanticipated and drive towards application oriented plans and not just hypothetical thinking it's not the hypothetical thinking does not help anymore you have to think in terms of application oriented plans and this is where certain qualities are expected out of the leader like for example everyone in your team everyone in your team irrespective of the technical non technical whatever the team may need an understanding leader you need to empathize with them you need to stand in their shoes and understand what is happening within them and not try to find critical uh, criticism or cri cri criticize them for uh, pointing out certain things and this is where your ability to face criticism stands for that makes you stand for and at this is the time where the delegation of responsibilities rather than thinking i alone can do things or i am capable of doing things and people are not capable of doing things this is when delegation of responsibilities comes into the picture there needs to be an enthusiasm the leader has to be an enthusiastic leader and a proper judgmental attitude you know as to what should be done when things have to be done when a decision has to be taken when a decision has to be implemented who to consult how much to consult and where to draw a line even for consultations or you know anal analysis and finally application and a leader should have a vision and integrity in order to apply all these most importantly a, a, a leader has to be emotionally intelligent with or without crisis a leader with emotional intelligence is a balanced person who stands as a role model even with even if he, he or she does not want to stand as a role model he stands as a role model it is the emotional intelligence which makes the qualities of leader very very strong leaders without intelligence have been repeated failures in the history repeated examples of leaders without emotional intelligence as failures have been seen in the history in spite of the brilliance that they have and accepting challenges accepting challenges goes with all these that we have talked about talked about already and especially during crisis there is an emergency phase where the task is to stabilize the situation and by time if if possible immediately take decisions and implement them and sometimes you may have you may need time so how well you can buy time what can you take what are the measures that you can take immediately now and how much time can you buy then comes the adaptive phase this is where you tackle the underlying causes immediately though you have to handle the crisis crisis intervention has to be done where you stabilize the situation to the best extent that you can and then see to it that you have some more time in your hand and that is when that is what you are going to use for adaptation this is where you tackle the underlying causes of the crisis and build the capacity to thrive in new reality like we are doing today in order to boost our immunity the safety measures that we are following the mask the whatever and even within the organizations where extra care is being taken for physical distancing for uh, um, um, for, for for seeing to it that they have uh, a very uh, sanitized atmosphere and then seeing to it that one does not transmit the virus to the others whatever possible measures are being taken where physically your presence is available is necessary or for most of the time to the best extent possible whenever you can handle things like this you know online online whatever best you can we are meeting people now online though virtually we are trying to make it as real as possible we are getting things done online thanks to the software development and thanks to our knowledge which we have improved during this one year with respect to this uh, um, utilization of software our small tiny this small instrument uh, called the mobile phone how much we are using in order to manage so many things so it is like you know we have we have all developed that crisis management this adaptive phase is also seen so let's just look at this model of uh, um, uh, which lays out nine competencies 
that were determined to be the most critical for leaders um, in a public health emergency response situation right now what we are facing for example it's it's called crisis um, leadership competency model you see that uh, whatever i have talked so far is already visible over here for example the communication being communication between uh, with the with the team within the team and uh, with people outside the team for which we build up connectivity that is our networking how important it is to have a global or national or uh, state level or uh, organizational level connectivity then courage and perseverance not going down when there is a crisis but being brave standing brave standing strong and being um, uh, a role model to the others and perseverance to overcome the problems credibility building up credibility and being able to be decisive emotional effectiveness integrative thinking when several people may give you several um, suggestions advices but then integration of the best of everything also integrating people integrating tasks integrating whatever resources are available integration means a lot including your own integration integrational capacity in your thinking and situational awareness uh, not uh, uh, not being blind to whatever is happening around to the context around and then of course the team leadership all these together determine the success of leadership one more uh, uh, leadership um, um, aspect that we can talk about here is um, a servant leadership we have talked about if you remember in the very first uh, uh, unit that you are i mean in the, in the fifth unit that we have uh, done so far in the modules that you have done we have talked about transactional leaders transformational leaders so, so the main goal of the leader is to serve and a traditional leader would focus on thriving of the company or an organization and a power leader authority is used for personal ends to man and to manipulate others whereas a servant leader shares power especially during a crisis situation power has to be shared crisis can be managed when you when you empower your employees and also use them for empowerment as well as, well as enlistment that's what is it is called no bringing them into um, uh, the, uh, the 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 fold of power and then giving them power in such a way that they feel involved and this em em empowerment is not a one time strategy nor is it one time mode it's a continuous process and it has to be integrated into the regular uh, functioning empowerment is a necessary uh, um, process so shares power puts the needs of the employees first since you you are you are mean you are meaning here to serve the leadership means to serve so your employees needs stand first and such a leader helps people develop and perform as highly as possible because you yourself are a powerful person who performs highly you stand as a model and also since you are empowering the others you are helping people develop and perform there is that onus there is that responsibility feeling of responsibility and commitment which everybody enjoys and this is where the empowerment will help people to perform as much as possible and as highly as possible so here the main elements are service and authority is there but it is a collaborative authority and then at the same time as a leader you are also a mentor who has a vision who has a foresight with all these things you become a successful leader even during times of crisis let's take the example of abraham lincoln for example you will see that all these are an integral part of his personality and his modes of function so let's just see where and how the servant leadership works you have already um, talked about we have already talked in your previous modules about um, autocratic leaders and democratic leaders and transformational leaders and laissez faire leaders we have talked about all these now let us look at the servant leadership where does it work how does it work a servant leadership helps in the task emphasis as well as in the democratic mode when when you are a democratic leader you show the qualities of um servant leadership where task emphasis is high but also people emphasis is here you look at this where task is highest and as well as people emphasis is also the highest now transformational leaders also have high people emphasis and they 
also use the servant leadership uh, qualities so that the task is performing also but at the same time people are not looked down upon people uh, those leaders who have not had people emphasis at all or who were very low on people emphasis have not proved to be highly successful so the effects of servant leadership here would be uh, on the emotional health of the employees because of the reliance on one to one communication remember i repeatedly have been saying that this communication is very important and understanding the person empathy is very important so one to one communication to understand the abilities needs desires goals and potential of those individuals who are a part of your team that aids in the employees ability to express themselves in the workplace where there is a scope for communication where there is a scope for communication two way communication not one one way communication very often people think the autocratic leader think leaders think that communication from their side matters a lot and not from the other side they think they can evolve consensus however their meaning of consensus would be them talking and not others that is not the way uh, servant leadership performs so can you think of any examples from current context for all these that we have talked about if anyone would like to interact very quickly i welcome the participation please Ma'am, Yogesh uh, would like to say something. He raised his hand. Yogesh, you can unmute yourself. I've given the permission to talk. Please go ahead. Yes, Yogesh, please go on. Yogesh, you have raised the hand. So now you can. Uh, share your point anyone else would like to uh, give the example from current uh, context please raise your hands i'll uh, i'll give the permission then i think we can continue <laughs> okay fine that's fine that's fine i will give you certain um, <clears throat> i will give you certain uh, uh, probably examples a little later maybe from history may and maybe after we talk about a few more examples probably you people will come up with some discussion so um, uh, jim collins um, um, there was a 2001 harvard business uh, review article and a popular book good to great and uh, um, they talk about what is called level 5 leadership and in 1996 collins began researching uh, what makes a great company he started looking at 1435 companies and ended up choosing some 11 truly great ones according to him and these 11 companies were all headed by what he called level 5 leaders what is this level 5 leaders level 5 leaders have certain qualities according to collins what are those qualities they have humility people who are great leaders have this quality of humility humbleness be that's why i said servant leadership remember in a servant leadership people don't think that they are the highest in the authority they think that that they are there, there to serve leader is to serve is what they think they don't seek success for their own glory again history have shown has shown examples of people who only thought about their own glory and have fallen down from that glory that they have very where the cost of somebody that they have achieved success is necessary so that the team and organization can thrive anyone who is a part of the organization and who is who means who knows uh, um, that or, that person can thrive and survive person can survive thrive and go to glorious position if the organization survives thrives and goes to a glorious position success means together and share and such level 5 leaders share credit for success they don't take all the credit for themselves 
they are first to accept blame for mistakes. Very often we see in autocratic leaders and certain other leaders, we see that the moment there is a blame, it is shifted to some subordinates. They have to take the bullets. The subordinates have to take the bullets in spite of doing the work. Credit is taken by the leader and blame is taken by the subordinates. But servant leaders and especially the level five leaders do not do that. Often shy but fearless when it comes to making decisions. These leaders may not in themselves. Let's remember Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln has been supposed to be a very shy person. He was not a very, to start with. We, in personality development training classes, they give Abraham Lincoln as example for many things. How he could overcome so many of his own, <clears throat> the so-called uh, what what were not conducive to his uh, to the growth of self or uh, um, to, for the service of the others. So often shy but fearless when it comes to making decisions, especially ones that most others may think are risky. Level 5 leaders thus are a class apart where in level 1, you see them as highly capable individuals, high quality contributions, useful level levels of knowledge, talent and skills. These people may not be the best out of the lot, but definitely they, their contributions have high quality, their knowledge is useful and they have the talent and skills required. Second, they are important as a contributing team member not just you know for, it's not that they're born to lead or whatever they contribute they use knowledge and skills to help their team succeed third they become competent managers they organize a group effectively to achieve specific goals and objectives and now they become the effective leader galvanize a department or organization to meet performance objectives and achieve a vision and thus they evolve as a great leader with a unique blend of humility at the same time will. A will to succeed, not just for the sake of self, but, this, but for the sake of the organization. So the same five steps which I have talked about, the same five levels of a highly capable individual to start with, a contributing team member, a competent manager, an effective leader, and the executive. So now let's look briefly at the case studies. Let's briefly look at the case studies. A level five leader is highly ambitious for the success of his company. He wants his company to succeed irrespective of his presence or not at the uh, helm. For example, let's take Sam Walton, a level five leader. He had unique and charismatic personality. And when he was suffering from cancer way back in 1992, everybody wondered what would happen to Walmart. I'm sure all of us have heard this name, Walmart. So everybody wondered what was going to happen to Walmart since Sam Walton is now down with cancer and what is going to happen. But Sam Walton wanted to prove that his company is bigger than self than himself he wanted to show that the company would be equally successful even when a charismatic leader like him does not help it does not need a, a person with charisma in order to lead so he chose david gloss he was a non-charismatic person and he was to succeed him he has looked at certain qualities in gloss and the company, the company continued to be great even after the founder was dead. Even after Walton, the company continued its journey towards success. Even today, Walmart is as successful as it has been or would be. Some more success stories. I remember in the beginning of the session today, somewhere towards the beginning of the session today, I said that there I am going to give uh, certain uh, um, examples towards the end. One such success story is of the Pepsi Corporation. Pepsi Corporation faced a crisis in 1993, which started with claims of syringes being found in cans of Diet Pepsi. Pepsi urged stores not to remove the product from the shelves. Usually what people do is they, the, the um, uh, products are immediately disappeared. But then Pepsi urged the stores not to remove the product from shelves 
while it had the cans and situation investigated. Immediately, it got it investigated. And this led to an arrest, which Pepsi then made public and then followed with their first video news release, showing the production process to demonstrate that such tampering was impossible within their factories. Within the, when they have shown the whole manufacturing using the video as a sequential process, people understood that within the company, within the manufacturing unit, inside the factory, there is no possibility of any syringe being inserted by any possible way. Then there was a second video. And this second video news release displayed a man who has been arrested. And a third video showed surveillance from a convenience store where a woman was caught inserting a syringe into a can. So it was with, a, uh, with, a, with, a, with an intention of uh, um, creating a problem to mar the image, to blacken the image of Pepsi, that such things were done and the company simultaneously publicly worked with FDA during the crisis and this made public communication effective throughout the crisis. Mind you, they worked along with the government. After the crisis had been resolved, the corporation ran a series of special campaigns designed to thank the public for standing by the corporation along with coupons for further compensation. They not only communicated timely, time to time, progressively, as and when things have been sorted out, are be, were being sort, sorted out, were being um, known. They, they not only communicated that, but at the same time, they also communicated their gratitude to the people who stood by them. Same is the case with the Tylenol of Johnson & Johnson. In the fall of 1982, a murderer added 65 milligrams of cyanide to some Tylenol capsules on store shelves, killing seven people, including three in one family. So what did Johnson & Johnson do? Immediately they called back. Remember, this is the, this is the question of the life of people. It's a tablet and it, it's a question of people, uh, the lives of people. So Johnson & Johnson immediately recalled and destroyed 31 million capsules and which costed hundred million dollars. What a loss it must be to the company. But the affable CEO, James Burke, appeared on television ads and at news conferences informing the consumers of the company's actions. And what they did was they, 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 they immediately um, in, introduced tamper-resistant packaging and Tylenol sales swiftly bounced People do, did not lose their faith in the company. That is because, once again, the servant leadership, the immediate decision-making, decisiveness, remember? Communication and empathy with those who are suffering. They swiftly bounced back to near pre-crisis levels, which is not so easy. However, there are also stories of unsuccessful um, incidents. Like, for example, let's take our Bhopal disaster, where poor communication before, during, and after the crisis cost thousands of lives. And this illustrates the importance of incorporating cross-cultural communication in crisis management plans. According to American University's Trade Environmental Database Case Studies of 1997, Operating manuals were printed only in English, and this is an extreme example of mismanagement, but indicative of systemic barriers to information diffusion. How do they? How do people who do not know English understand what were the uh, what were the necessary what was the necessary care? Crisis management strategy can help the upper management make more calculated decisions in how they should respond to um, disaster scenarios. And Again, in India, we have success stories as well. We have very much the success of Electuvalapil Sridharan, popularly known as Metroman. He is largely credited for changing the face of public transport in India by his leadership in building Konkan Railway and the Delhi Metro, where he served as its managing director between 95 and 2012. In the build-up to the first Gulf War, there was fuel shortage in several countries around the globe, including India. The only project that managed to stand up against all odds at that point of time was 
the construction of Konkan Railway, which was handled by Srikaran. Once again, a success story of leadership during crisis. So, well, I think we have extensively discussed about leadership during crisis and its special significance to the pandemic crisis which is going on. I now open uh, um, uh, the forum for discussion, uh, Dr. Monica and Dr. Manas. Uh, we can open it for any questions or discussion, if any. Can I stop sharing? Yes, ma'am. Uh, may I now request uh, the participants to ask your questions, if any, or you can raise your hands, you can put it in the chat box, or you can also post it on the question and answer uh, box, wherever you find it convenient. Please post your question or raise your hands. I'll give you the permission to ask your questions. Ma'am, by the time uh, we receive the questions here, we have uh, two questions. Uh, I think one now has been answered already. What are different types of leadership qualities and its importance? I think uh, uh, we have, uh, you have dealt it uh, in detail about this. Uh, the next is be objective on any matter. Is strategy to favor of powerful? So this question somewhere, uh, I think comes to everybody's mind also. It's basically being objective on any matter. Is it a strategy to favor of power somewhere? And you can reply to this question. Being, being objective more than calling it a strategy, it has to be a quality of a leader. I wouldn't call it a strategy at all. It is a quality of a leader. Unless you are objective, you are, uh, like I said, the integrity that I have talked about, the empathy that I have talked about, and the balance, the emotional balance which was required, and the, uh, uh, the communication, the communication which is meant to happen will not be able to happen unless unless you are objective. Objectivity is a must, is very necessary. However, when it comes to understanding the people and being able to support people, sometimes you may have to move a slight digression here and there and exceptions may be necessary when you are a leader. In such cases, too much of objectivity, too much of objectivity. Again, I'm talking about boundaries. Just as I always talk in all my um, um, sessions about uh, boundaries, here again I'm talking about boundaries and limits. If too much of objectivity is there, then you may not be able to exercise that empathy. So objectivity has to be a quality because unless you are objective, you will not be able to perform. You will not be able to understand. You will not be able to integrate things. You will not be able to exercise your wisdom and balance. That, that balance, that homeostasis which is required will come with objectivity. And if we have to go by the Indian uh, um, interpretation of it, it has to be a detached attachment. If I have to use a very Indian term, it should yes. be a detached attachment. Any other questions? Uh, participants, I request all the participants to please raise your question. This is a very good platform. Uh, even if you have a questions from across the module of week five, you can raise the questions here also. So please come up with your questions. You can even, they can even share any success stories or unsuccessful stories. If they want to share any case studies, I'm fine with it. I think, ma'am, you've been so, you, you, you've explained it in such simple terms. And I think before the questions, you have answered all the questions. Uh, Yogesh is again joining, maybe if he wants to ask. Yogesh uh, ji, if you want to ask your question, please unmute, unmute yourself. Ma'am, you can stop the screen sharing. Uh, that would be good. Okay. I just thought in case it is required. Mm. Yes. Any questions, anyone? I'm fine. No questions. <laughs> 
they were the these were the only uh, questions which uh, yes uh, samir uh, you may ask your question samir ji would you want to ask any question you can unmute first yourself and then ask or you can post it also no. yeah Hello. yes 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 samir please ma'am there is a at least curriculum uh, in the under the ns2 level yes there is a course for the under ns2 level this is for that course we didn't we didn't understand your question can you ask one once again Actually, I'm asking the uh, just the you have seen the curriculum. This is curriculum development. So, if uh, NSQ level one, two, three uh, regarding that one, no? NSQ National Skill Development Council. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so, how can the making the procedure this one? NSQ level, you want how to make the curriculum, how to go about it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, maybe I think this is a very varied question uh, for all of us. So maybe I think you need a kind of uh, structural, uh, ma'am, if you would like to take it up. Uh, what is it that precisely he wants? I mean, what is it that uh, he's expecting us to answer in terms of leadership? Yes, uh, basically what I understand is uh, NSQ level for, for developing the curriculum for NSQ level. So maybe I think it is basically uh, they have to come up with a committee where uh, two, three people, uh, one at the top and then uh, content experts are required. I think that uh, somewhere he's asking. See, a procedure has to be in place for anything. Content development is one. Second is the procedural uh, clarity. Um, as a leader, who to, who to uh, involve, what should be done, how it should be done, and where the leader's decisiveness comes, all these are important. So the prescribed procedures probably can be followed. But then you have to also think about the multifaceted, um, from a multifaceted angle as to how to integrate all these procedures. That's where the leadership matters. I think I have to talk from a leadership point of view. So, uh, ma'am, there's one more question from Yogesh. Uh, how do we lead and enable remote revenue teams in a crisis? How do we lead and enable rem remote revenue teams in a crisis? Yeah, once again, uh, the very fact that you are using the term remote in, in itself tells us that we have come up with a solution. We have come up with a way of dealing with things. Today, there is what is called new normal. We don't have the standard procedures which were there in place all these years, for decades that we have been following, but we are evolving things. So when it comes to teamwork, when it comes to teamwork, and when there is a crisis, we are talking about the pandemic crisis, right? So at this point in time, the remote functioning itself uh, how we uh, uh, put things together using the software network, so in the uh, communication network, be it your uh, uh, um, online uh, meets or whatever, and also connectivity. How you can uh, bring that connectivity and how you are well aware of what should be done and time to time updates as to what is happening. I think that is where a leader, especially as a level five leader, you have to be in touch with the teams, each and every. It's not that only a few members are delegated the responsibility and the others are left out, but each member has to be um, um, connected to and the leader ha has to make each and every team member feel that he or she matters a lot in this team. That is where the team building and um, the dynamics of the group, the di group dynamics which keep changing, that those have to be handled by May be it be it in a um, in in this particular context or any other context. I think uh, the same procedure everywhere, and all the qualities which I uh, told you towards the end are required to be applied. <clears throat> okay, 
Thank you, ma'am, for answering this question. Any other question, or we will uh, we are already uh, moving towards the end, and the time is also getting over. So, if you have any question, we can take one more. Uh, otherwise, we will like to uh, close this session for today. Any more questions? Uh, thank you, ma'am, for this uh, very uh, enlightening session, which was very simple also for all of us to understand. I'll just uh, summarize this session for the convenience of everybody. So uh, we started with leadership and crisis with their meanings also, and then elements of crisis. Uh, what are the major elements of crisis? Uh, a very new thing which I understood today is crisis is a process of transformation where the old system can no longer be maintained. So I think we are this year or the previous year, we are administering this kind of uh, crisis and we are administering that, okay, the, the new system is uh, taking place instead of the previous one. Uh, also, uh, it also defines need for change. Then uh, we have talked about routine crisis, novel crisis, and other many types of crisis. Then phases of crisis and role of leader during each phase we have talked about uh, qualities expected out of a leader, crisis leader competency model also we have discussed. Then we have focused upon servant leadership and under which the major focus was on empower, empowering your employees. So that was the, I think, major focus of servant leadership. Then we have also talked about five different levels of uh, leadership and we have discussed many case studies out of which many were successful and one the bhopal uh, 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 gas tragedy was an unsuccessful model of the leadership these were the major uh, things we have discussed and i really thank you ma'am for this uh, enlightening session any last words uh, from you uh, towards the end of this session um leadership um, as I have told in my uh, modules, uh, it's not necessary that uh, a leader is born or leader brings his qualities or whatever, not necessary. There may be some people who are genetically endowed, but at the same time, leaders emerge, especially during this pandemic time. We have been seeing several success stories in small organizations to big, including people who are homemakers, including a uh, uh, what people think, what does a homemaker do? But a homemaker, a woman also has shown how as a multifaceted personality, she is able to balance between so many things. That way, I think every woman in every household has emerged as a leader. Every child, every child who got adapted to the variety of the innovations which the um, teachers have been showing um, in uh, several contexts um, in the uh, present education system has emerged in his or her own way as a successful, uh, um, um, as, as, a, as, as a person who would take challenges and emerge successfully. Every parent, every individual, every person with his or her own employment or employment outside, and everyone who was able to manage this crisis all these days, in one way or the other, we have learned a lot. We have learned a lot and there are several people in this process, like I said, including uh, uh, the mother uh, the mother of every home has emerged as leaders and even in small enterprises which would have been shut down for various reasons we see people running them successfully like like someone was asking even the remote uh, um, organization even 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 the remote uh, leadership even the uh, remote way of accessing uh, facilities resources have been found we have shown that adversity Adversity does not remain as an adversity forever. Many of us have shown that adversity also gives rise to resilience. And a resilient leader is someone who becomes a role model to several others. And in this process, there were a chain of leaders who evolved. So I think pandemic has taught us crisis, not only management, of not only crisis management, but being successful in spite of the adversity. 
Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Manas sir, any last words from you? Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Monica and uh, Dr. Padmaja. It's uh, really uh, last last four uh, webinars, and uh, I found time to attend this webinar. This is fifth one. Actually, you know, always I used to you know, just uh, start up the things, and uh, backgroundly I was uh, just observing, and uh, I used to see the video. Uh, after uh, end of this uh, uh, webinar and session. But uh, I get this opportunity to uh, learn from this webinar and uh, it's nice going. And so I think uh, our participants and learners, they're enjoying with this. However, uh, learners are scattered across the globe. So we are recording this video and we are putting uh, again to the platform. So um, all the learners, though, those who missed, live they can also watch this video and learn out of it thank you very much joining with us uh, thank you uh, dr padmaja giving your uh, precious time in since morning and uh, monica thank you very much nicely coordinating this program thank you so thank you dr Ma manas and dr monica thank you very much uh, just one last word for the participants thank you all for joining in for this uh, live session uh, i would request you or to, if you want, you can go through this video on the portal itself and also uh, be active in the discussion forums. Nam will be there also answering your queries. And also please attempt, the quiz will be released uh, on, on Friday, that is tomorrow. Uh, so please attempt the quiz. If in any case you have not attempted the previous quizzes also, you may attempt. We have kept this option, understanding the time and other issues that you can attempt the quiz, any quiz till the end of this course, that is 28th of April. So this is a good opportunity for to uh, go back to the modules and attempt the quizzes. And also you can re-attempt any quiz to increase your uh, marks if you wish to. Uh, the last, uh, the marks of the last quiz will be taken as the final marks for your uh, certification purposes. So uh, please be active keep uh, writing to the forums and also uh, keep attempting your quizzes on time so that you can finish the course on time. Thank you very much, all the participants. Thank you, uh, Padmaja ma'am for the uh, very uh, simple, uh, but yet enlightening session. Thank you, Manas sir, for motivating all of us for uh, doing our jobs on time and uh, in a proper way. Thank you once again, signing off for now. Thank you. Thanks to all participants.